Hey everyone and welcome back to Invisible Not Broken. Sorry we had to take an unexpected hiatus. Um, I'm sure all of you understand chronic illness and um, yeah so lots of dislocations had to take a week off so thank you for sticking with us. And today I have one of my favorite guests back who I keep luring back on the podcast and hope she will be more of a permanent part. It's Eva from Wellacopia and she just did a major change with her business and I wanted to bring her back because that's pretty exciting and it's also super energy intensive and I kind of wanted to hear a little bit more from her how she did things differently this time around and why she decided to make this change and what it means for all of you who should be going over to wellacopia.com and sign up immediately. It's a really great service and the more of us who sign up the more service it will provide. So I will let Eva explain what Wellacopia is and what's different now. Hey, Eva. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for having me back on. I'm so honored when you introduced <laughs> me. I love you too. Oh, so honest. much. I mean, you have like an open like mic here anytime you want to come on. No problem. I'm just going to pop on in the middle of it. <laughs> oh, please hey, do. <laughs> Well, wonderful. So yeah, I, I'd love to talk about Wellacopia because I, I built Wellacopia, I guess, initially for myself as someone with a chronic illness. Um, but and as share I what you have in case someone community. did not actually hear your episode. What is it you have? Oh, I have fibromyalgia, hypermobility syndrome. Um, I don't think EDS, although I have not been tested yet. <laughs> Uh, but from the research I've done, I don't think I have EDS. I should probably get tested. Um, and undiagnosed gastrointestinal complications. Um, yeah, luckily, I, I guess the gist is that I do deal with it every single day. I don't have truly debilitating flare-ups that often. I am in bed for a day or a few at a time, about once or twice a year. Um, but then there are times where... You know, it's maybe a half a day where I'm just like not a person. Uh, but anyway, uh, it has been something I've been dealing with since I was 12, uh, maybe before that, but really wasn't very aware. Uh, so that's my general, my story, I guess, my very short story of my that's a story. story. <laughs> that's, that's a gist. Oh, and I'm pretty sure that it all came from, or a good part of it came from being, um, a professionally trained ballet dancer for 15 years. So that might be the culprit. You might. know, this month has been our ballet episodes between <laughs> you yeah. and Rebecca and me. It's like, wow, we are, uh, we are not the faces for yay ballet. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Still love it. Definitely a love hate relationship, kind of like a tumultuous, dramatic, you know, high school sweetheart situation. <laughs> it is a slightly one. abusive relationship. <laughs> like, yeah. Ballet could definitely be considered an obsession and abusive relationship. Oh yeah, definitely. And like a first love, yeah, it's a really good analogy. Um, but okay, Wellacopia. So Wellacopia is a matching platform for those with chronic conditions and medical and wellness practitioners. And when I say matching, I mean like the best way to understand is it it is that it functions like a dating site. It's connecting the two that are right for one another. And when I say dating site, I don't mean swipey Tinders or <laughs> Hinge or whatever those are. I mean like, okay, Cupid, Match.com, eHarmony, the ones where it's really about finding the right relationship uh, for you long-term and learning more about who they are as a person. So in regards to Wellacopia, obviously we're not talking like, Find the practitioner that you want to date. That's not <laughs> date, <laughs> but date, quote unquote. Yeah, but uh, rather the the practitioner or practitioners that you want to be part of your healthcare journey. Um, because I think I can speak for most of us when I say that uh, we've had to do a lot of trial and error. Uh, a lot of us probably just for diagnoses. I mean, that took me ten years, so there was that. Um, but even those that you've had recommendations from like by your GP or your friends, uh, they, they may be good because those people know you to some extent, but you're still an individual. You are not your friend. You are not your GP. Your insurance definitely doesn't know who's best for you, but they might be able to give you a good financial <laughs> backup. Uh, hopefully uh, we won't get into that either. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, I'll swallow that all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that like my short anecdote there is. I really feel like out of pocket and insurance kind of balance out at the end of the day. 
depending on how you look at the pros and cons. Um, but anyway, uh, so Wellacopia matches you with a practitioner, uh, and a practitioner actually matches with the patients as well, uh, based on criteria that goes much more in depth than just like who's in my area or in my insurance or even condition uh, and specialty. Um, we do have the bare bones, so you can whittle down that way. Uh, but then Wellacopia will ask you questions about your preferences and approach to care. Um, like if you want that practitioner to ask you questions about your personal life or not. Some people love that. Some people hate that. Or um, whether or not they feel they need as much time as possible with their practitioner or want them to do outside research. These are all different kinds of preferences. So also, I have a question about that. And sure. if, it, um, if it isn't what you want to talk about, I, I promise I'll go back and erase it. But um, with these preferences, do you have something in there that um, the doctors are uh, friendly towards people who have different lifestyles or people who are gay or people who are transgender? Do you have like a space there for, for practitioners so that someone can go to someone and be like, going through transgender, is there, or it, please forgive me, everyone, if I'm getting the words and terms wrong. I just dislocated a femur today and I am... I can't even find the right words for like things in my car today. So please give me a break on not getting the right terms. But I do want to know, like, do you have something like that for people so that they know who to go to for those things and know that they won't have someone who's judgmental or not a specialist in that? That's a really good question. And it was actually one of the first uh, bits of feedback we got uh, last year. Uh, so like, for instance, um, I think it was, yeah, someone who said they were gay and wanted only a psychiatrist that was gay as well. So not even just like someone who takes care of people who are, or like what or accepting people, or yeah, yeah, zero exactly. judgment. Like <laughs> wanted them to be, and mothers have said the same. Oh, are you okay? Yeah. Well, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> you gotta love when I start your interview with, okay, we're gonna have to do this fast because I will end up out of shock really soon. <laughs> you can always do a part two, no problem. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We might end up doing a part two, but let's just keep going while we can. <laughs> no problem. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are definitely gonna be having more um, in-depth matching with things like that. But right now, one of the the personalized aspects of Wellacopia is that not only do you match based on all these different criteria, criterium, is that a word? Criteria? It is now, <laughs> God damn it. it now. Um, but you uh, also have open text boxes within your profile, the practitioners oh. and the patients. And uh, therefore you can write in there what your preferences are, like who ideally would be right for you and also what types of patients you like to see or have experience with. And we really encourage both sides to do this. So we don't have matching on that right now because there are like so many things one could match on. For instance, I would really love a physical therapist that treats dancers. Like mm. that is their specialty. And again, because there's so many little nuances of like those uh, things that you're looking for. What we're going to have is have people write it out um, in their profiles and we're going to have a search bar so you can search for those key terms within your matches. Yeah, I love that because I really think like to be able to find someone who is um, friendly towards everyone is, or uh, even specializing in things like um, working with someone who is gay or transgender. Those are such important things when you're trying to get health care that you don't have to feel judged and that you feel open to discuss all parts of your life and identity. It's It's a really important thing to feel comfortable and safe with your Position. So it's wonderful that you have that that mindset with this new creation of Wallacopia. So what what's new? What's different with it? I know you launched um, earlier this year, and then you did this beautiful rebrand, and your website is gorgeous. I'm such a uh, UI geek. Like this stuff fascinates <laughs> me. Um, it's beautiful. So what was your idea? Why did you change, or why did you go through a rebrand? So there were a couple things that happened. We uh, about this time last year, we actually did. I guess, a, a beta version, meaning we released it to um, certain communities to test it out. And in some ways, we got uh, phenomenal feedback and uh, like and positive feedback and um, interest because we actually had too many people sign up, like patients, and they were from all over the country and even internationally. And I was just focused on bringing practitioners in the New York City area because 
that's where I was from. So I was like, okay, people want this. I can't deliver. What do I do? Uh, so that was an issue. And then, um, uh, so I had to figure out how I was going to handle that. But also I did discover in the process, the user experience wasn't great. I do not claim to be a user experience expert. I'm an empath and therefore I think I understand people pretty well, but this is, is different. Um, so we did go through quite a bit of testing, both formally and informally. Uh, so while like, I guess you could say some parts of our branding are similar, uh, the user experience is very different. Now we have um, both parties can register in like three minutes. And once you register, all the matching is done. Like, wow. Really fast. And when you get to your dashboard, you already have matches waiting for you. Um, and then you can even do additional filters on top of those matches. Just to make it clear, matching is not filtering. <laughs> a lot of people will say, or like you'll see platforms that may use the term matching, but it's more like just whittling down to people in your area or, or who do certain things. Well, a copy actually weighs things differently and has a whole magical system behind it that's, you know, come from a lot of different research, both from us and studies and, and so on. Um, but yeah, so we have it make it very easy to register. You can um, find the practitioner that, you know, is the, either the best match for you or just go through them and maybe see who you like better. You can chat with them, which is another way you can find out just how comfortable um, you are with them. Uh, and then you can also request a booking. And from there, everything's kind of taken offline. There's an exchange of information, blah, blah, blah. Oh, but, I want to back uh, up the for booking... just one second. So you said that you can talk to them. Does that mean that you can actually have a small discussion without having to go to their office, pay a fee of like your, like every time you want to test out a therapist or you want to test out someone and you just have like three simple questions before you could even see someone like, are you this kind of, do you, have you worked with this kind of person? Like, so you would be able to do that without paying out a $200 fee or having to hook your insurance in? Exactly. Whoa. See, that's magic for me. Just the idea that you could do that. <laughs> like it's super painful for me to get in a car and I have to get someone to drive me to an appointment. Like it's three hours for me to go to almost any doctor right now. And it's Awful. Wow. That would be amazing to be, that's, that's worth the price of admission right there. <laughs> that would save people so much money and time and pain, especially those of us who are on disability or don't have cars and have to use public transportation. I mean, that's, that would be, that's, that's a huge life changing thing. I'm glad it's funny. I didn't think about, I didn't focus on that as much, but that's, that is, that is true. Uh, I know that I always have a few questions before and I just end up calling them and hoping they will answer me. But, uh, but that's, I mean, that's very difficult. Well, I have uh, a I'm disorder where if they hear what I have, they will almost automatically go, nope, not seeing you. Absolutely not. And it saves so much time if I could at least just like get that through first. So it's like, okay, now I know to move on to a different doctor and find someone who will actually see all or stainless. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And, and hopefully the whole point of Wellacopia is that you don't even have to, to go through the wondering you're going to match with someone and your highest match is going to be someone at the very least who treats EDS, you know, the, and we don't let practitioners pick all of the illnesses. We actually don't let practitioners pick more than 10 wow. and think of like a gastroenterologist or a rheumatologist. They treat way more than 10 conditions. Um, I can tell you right now, the rheumatologists don't treat all our stainless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people would probably think they do, which is uh -huh. crazy. I bet like they might list it and it, yeah. Uh so the reason we do that and we also do this by the way on the patient side. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to say something quickly. We actually don't call people patients on Wellacopia. We we label the patients as seekers cuz I know we don't we're called patients all the time. Like it's such a big part of our identity. And I don't think it's a positive part of our identity. Uh, so I wanted, and I've done this since the beginning of Wellacopia, patients on Wellacopia are seekers because we're seeking care. That's what we're doing. And um, we label the practitioners as specialists. And even if those specialists are actually like general practitioners, um, I chose the term specialist because these are people that specialize in you. And they have a specialty, like a special approach to their practice. And, and they're individuals, just like we're individuals. So, so I'm going to try and keep to the term seeker and specialist now because 
I'll, yeah. I'll try to help, but I, I make no promises. So it really does bring it back to your idea of this is like, you know, match.com. Like this is, these are individual people also. And I think we forget that when we are the sick people, we are the ones who are visiting doctors, is that they are individuals as well. And we just see like a white coat and a stethoscope and go, doctor. And there's like nothing yeah. else there. Like, okay, it's it's good to remember that there's two sides of this. So you're looking for who to come on and sign up for Wellacopia. So Wellacopia really does um, cater to, I guess, our population in particular, those with invisible chronic conditions. They don't have to be invisible, but, um, you know, that's uh, a lot of us are. <laughs> and uh, I think the majority of our users currently have fibromyalgia, autoimmune conditions, um, a lot of probably undiagnosed conditions. Um, and I think like everyone on there is looking for more than one practitioner at this point, uh, usually a combination of a medical and a wellness practitioner. Uh, and as for the, sorry, the specialist, <laughs> the specialist um, on Wellacopia right now, uh, the majority are what I put under the category of integrative. So that could be medical or wellness, but it's uh, it means that they see the body as a whole body, as a whole system, rather than just like, here's an organ, that's what I treat, sort of thing. Uh, because of their chronic illnesses, that's what we need. We are people. We are a, a, a complicated system, and everything affects everything else. So those are the people I brought on um, first, probably will continue to, and they are all personally vetted by me. Um, and recommended by other people. I did not just like mass email specialists and say, hey, you guys should be on here. No, I made sure that they treat those illnesses. They're, they've um, had a lot of success and that they care about this mission. Okay. Yeah. But you have, um... oh, brain, just stop there. So for, <laughs> for doctors, uh, physical therapists, we have some wonderful, um, wonderful health professionals who do listen to the show. What do you want them to do? Do you want them to go on to wellacopia.com and sign up as a physician or as a physical therapist, or would they need to email you directly? So actually the way uh, specialists sign up is on like the homepage. You can't miss it. You either like register as a seeker or you apply as a specialist. So once they give me the initial application, uh, which I, I see immediately, uh, I will just confirm like what I think about it and then they can move on with the process. So it's kind of like a little bit of both. It okay. is, they just go on, but it's a bit of an application just so I can make sure there's quality control. I like the quality control part. So if someone goes to a specialist that had gotten through the thing, but didn't, they aren't the best. And someone can like write you back and go, okay, so I know this is on your website, but this is my experience with this doctor. Is there something for that? Absolutely. In fact, I encourage just across the board feedback, um, critique, um, like even complaints. Uh, complaints I, are the best thing ever. <laughs> I mean, like we just got like two reviews on our um, Apple podcast that were super good, like constructive criticism. And I'm like, this is really helpful. Thank you. Like it's when people actually tell you what you're doing wrong. It's like, oh, OK, well, that's helpful. My, I might. Uh, one of them, if you've listened to, I can't fix. I'm sorry. I cackle when I get in pain and nervous. So sorry, <laughs> my fault. Um, but other ones, I was like, well, that's interesting. Yeah, we could we could absolutely throw that in. So yeah, the constructive criticism, good. Oh, I, I love it. Uh, it's one of my favorite things. I mean, I'm sure you understand this. Growing up as a dancer, <laughs> yeah, like critique was the best thing ever because it meant they cared and they thought you had potential. If they didn't give you critique, it was like, mm, you're not worth it. You're not even worth <laughs> it trying to improve. Or we're so going back to abusive cool. relationship. I mean, like the way they critiqued us was with the baton. Whack. <laughs> it's a different kind of constructive criticism. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That side. Seriously. Ballet bad. is like abusive relationship. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to discourage anyone, but at the same time, it's just like, a, hey, just so you know, this is what you're getting yourself into. I mean, you, you came into ballet like 10 years after I did. When I was going through it, it was still the Balanchine baby body type. It was still the Russian method. It was like, oh, no, don't worry. no offense still to true. Russians, but it was absolutely baton, 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 baton. My daughter's in ballet now because it doesn't matter what you want them to do or not do. And uh, 
it's a much kinder, gentler world right now, I think, with uh, Missy Copeland redefining the ballet body. And um, this is not nearly the angry, mean person that I remember in ballet. So it's I, I'm, I'm trying to breathe through that right now. <laughs> yeah, there was no baton in my day, but there was a lot of um, uh, verbal abuse, mm -hmm. I guess. And just click abuse, but I'm, that's a whole, yeah. <laughs> Um, it was definitely an ab abusive world. Uh, and min is, what did I call them? Skinny minis? Definitely a thing. Definitely a thing. Um, and actually, I think one of the reasons I have such uh, pain in my joints is because I was probably always going to have this issue. But because I was a ballet dancer and I'm very muscular, I was, I was very slim, but I'm very muscular at the same time. And that's, and muscles are heavy. So it just made everything worse with the joints. Like maybe I would have had this pain when I was in my twenties rather than when I was in my teens or, or maybe later. I don't even know. Uh, but I uh, forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> We're doing great today. This is, uh... there's, there's so many things that I want to say about it, obviously. Um, but I, I'm trying to think what I want to convey more than anything, not just to talk about the platform. Obviously I'm here for any questions anyone has and you can, Email me at eva at wellacopia.com or go on the chat bot there. Uh, but what I think is most important is that I want everyone to know that I, I created it because I need, I know that we all need a space to feel heard and cared for and comforted. And I love the Facebook groups. I love all the communities out there. But if you don't have someone to take care of you who who knows what you're going through in a different way from a professional standpoint, from a, from a health standpoint, you're always going to have that hole. And that could even be yourself to an extent, like learning, um, like getting a lot of education and then being able to manage on your own. But, and I mean, anyone can correct me if I'm wrong. I I've always felt, and I've noticed from other people that they're always, they always feel a little lost when they don't really know from a professional point of view, what's right or wrong. Uh, but at the same time, I'm a huge advocate for coming to professionals with our opinions and being like, this is what I know about my body. Please listen to what I know. And then I want your feedback and your guidance and, and so on. And a good practitioner will take what you've provided, that information you've provided on your own experience, and they may have you see it a different way. But that's also part of, I guess you could say, any relationship, right? Like any kind of friend or spouse that you have, they listen to your needs. They listen to what you have to say and how you express your emotions. And then maybe it's just about being heard and running with that. Or sometimes it's offering another piece of advice. Or maybe you could look at it this way. Maybe here's something you didn't know. Um, I really... I really go to the analogy over and over and over again of it being a relationship between two people because that that's what it is at the end of the day. One knows more than the other in different ways, right? <laughs> you know, it's uh, that's complicated because one person literally has your life in their hands. And if right. they don't understand your, like with um, Eller Stainless and with Mast Cell, it's very easy to kill me if you don't know exactly how to use anesthesia with someone like me, or if you don't know, even my dentist could end up causing incredible damage when I have POTS. And like, so if you don't find the right person, that, that's literally your life in someone else's hands. And you also bring up a great point with the Facebook groups. If, um, if you're listening to the podcast for all, you know, we've interviewed people who are not diagnosed yet. They have something wrong and they know something's very, very wrong, but working through the system, it's very hard for them to get a diagnosis. And if you don't have those groups with the diagnosis, you don't have access to all these doctors who have like specialties and like, you're like, well, I'm super hyper mobile, but I haven't found the Eller Stainless group yet. And so you don't know what, what doctors to call to talk to. So I think this gives you an incredible access point to doctors who might specialize in things like you're like, this is something horribly, horribly wrong. I don't have a name for it yet. Yeah. And, and actually that's very important because I know a lot of people come to Wellacopia not being diagnosed yet, or yeah. maybe a re-diagnosis. It's actually one of the matching criteria is if, a, uh, you know, a ser uh, like a primary preference for you is that you want to make sure you have the right diagnosis that someone in their typical approach to care 
will read diagnose you just to make sure. Uh, it's like a lot of people feel like they need that. Uh, but you can also match just on symptoms and all the other criteria. You could say, I don't know. Um, you can also just change that every so often to see what comes up. Like you can pick your diagnosis and then take it back <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> That's a way to experiment with can it. Can I do that physically? Can I just take off like three of my <laughs> diet? Uh, like just make sure my body doesn't even have it. Like <laughs> just get rid of the other stainless mass cell and pots. That'd be great. <laughs> Actually, you were talking about, so about the Facebook groups, um, there's so much positive that comes through community and I love it. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, when you join up Wallacopia, go and join the Facebook group also. I think there's a link in the Wallacopia website to do that. It's a great place to get information and support. Thank you. Yeah. We're building up our community on Facebook. We also have, you know, decent on Instagram, but Instagram is kind of a different thing. Uh, and, um, yeah, there, I mean, there are so many support groups out there. Uh, and I love that there is a place for us to to vent and maybe get information. But this is another space where, first of all, things can be very negative. I mean, I'm part of some groups where it's literally just complaints and people bring you down. And I, I get it. I get it. But I also am already bringing myself down. So <laughs> I need some uplifting and stories of success and so on. Uh, and also, again, we're all individuals. So when people talk about these drugs that have worked the, for them, for instance, so like Lyrica for fibromyalgia, um, that's terrible for some people. And for some people, it's been really helpful. It's like people ask about, you know, oh, is this good for you? And it's like, okay, you can ask, but you need to know you're an individual and it could be totally different for you. Uh, that could just go for like any kind of treatment or advice, uh, in general. So, um, I like my background is personalized medicine. I'm a nutrition scientist who studied epigenetics. So like, even when people ask me about nutrition, they're like, what should I eat? And I just roll my eyes and I, I know why they ask, but <laughs> I just say like, okay, I'm either going to tell you the very general of what I think the typical person should aim towards or I have to interview you for like two hours. So choose. <laughs> but there is also the upside. Like I know what I do is I go into my Elder Stainless group all the time when a doctor gives a recommendation for a surgery or for a new pain med. I always go into there and not that I, I use their word as God or like down from like, there's no tablet here, but it's just, well, there's my iPad, but not in that way. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I will get back on track. Really seriously, people, femur dislocation. I'm doing my best here. Um, but I always go on there because my doctors don't have Eller Stainless. So mm -hmm. when they're saying, oh, go ahead and try this, they don't know anything other than what other people have told them. So I go to the source and I'm like, okay, give me a rundown, everyone. What's, what was your reaction to this? And the advice I've gotten from that has been amazing. Not that I use them as doctors, but they have that personal experience with like, this is my experience with the fentanyl patch. This is who I was. This is what's going on. And it was, it was actually much easier for me to make that choice after reading like 20 people who had taken the fentanyl patch and going, okay, I understand more about what that personal life experience is than my doctor going, your pain level's up. Let's do this. Like It was literally that discussion. It was literally like, oh, you still have an eight with your painkillers. We should just put you on something much higher. Let's do this. And I'm like, oh, well, I think I'm going to talk to some people first. And it was not that blase of a deal to go into a fentanyl patch. But please go talk to your doctors also. But it is nice to get people's, you know, actual life experiences as well in those groups. Yeah, absolutely. And especially if you see something over and over again, like, a re I mean, this is super basic and I didn't understand this, uh, but I noticed that so many people with fibromyalgia take Epsom salt baths and I was like, I, I don't get it. What is this bath doing for you? And then I looked it up and I didn't know this as a nutritionist and I was like, oh my God, it's a magnesium bath. This makes so much sense now. And the best way to absorb magnesium for fibromyalgia is through your skin. So I use Epsom salt now and it's great. Uh, but yeah, that I was, I never would have guessed that in a million years, or even if I saw it written up, which I probably did like in an article, I, I wouldn't have been like, yeah, a bath is my go-to. They also uh, have spray. They have Epsom salt spray bottles. If you don't have time to take a bath, that's also a good one. 
Yeah. Sorry, we, we got off track here. So I will put us back on track because I am really curious how this was for you to to go through a, a relaunch with chronic illness after you had launched one time before. What did you learn from launching before to launching now while having a chronic illness? Was there saying you did differently? What did you learn? <laughs> Learned so much. I mean, I, one one thing I love about this process, although it can be painful uh, physically uh, uh, and mentally, uh, uh. <laughs> um, is uh, is that it's constant learning. I mean, really daily. Uh, but actually, to connect this with something you were just saying about um, uh, in the Facebook groups, people like the best part being that they've had these experiences and they have EDS. They understand. Is I switched to bringing on a ton of practitioners that have had or had ha, have <laughs> the the illnesses that they treat so wow. they're both you could say seekers and specialists at the same time um i notice our best specialists are ones that have dealt with that or they um or and or they have a loved one who has and if they've chosen a career because a loved one has had that illness it means it did greatly impact them and they were very involved even if they didn't um, first-hand ex- experience it themselves. So I can't promise that every practitioner does, but a lot of them do. Uh, and um, also just to go, this is very important um, when it comes to our redesign or, or rather just our revamp from what I learned last year, I mentioned that we had all these seekers coming from all over the country and even the world, and I couldn't cater to them. So while I do have to pick an area at a time, at least, you know, we just launched. So I am starting in the New York City and surrounding areas again. 75% of our practitioners provide telemedicine. Um, And you do need to be in person for certain things. Absolutely. Some of it can be done by a GP and then the specialty things and follow up and management can be done via telemedicine. Um, but that's one way I'm doing my best to, to help people in other areas. Uh, but because naturally there, I I mean, and people listening to this podcast, you're like all over the country and world in the world. I know how many, thank you, China. You have become one of our biggest listening audiences. I really appreciate it. I am so glad that we are more traveled than I am, but it's been free with South Africa has been tuning in India. Thank you, India, um, Australia, all over Europe, um, Russia. It's been amazing. I'm so grateful for everyone who listens, but that really does make that telemedicine thing even more important because I'm sure where some of you are listening, there might not be a specialist in your body problems. Like for me, I have Ehlers-Danlos and we have very few specialists here where in England, there are more specialists. That's interesting. Isn't it? (laughs) I I don't know about listeners, but in terms of my social media, a good chunk of them are from the UK. I did not target that at all. Uh, And from what I've learned, it's because some of our illnesses aren't recognized in the UK. Wow. Uh, I don't even know if fibromyalgia is yet. I have to check. It that was wasn't an uphill a- battle because it wasn't here for a very long time. Yeah. So um, that's definitely an issue. And of course, um, like I said, depending on your condition or or maybe at some point you, you're going to need someone in person. A lot of people do travel far for that. Like you even said three hours. Um, but it's something. And even if it's a second opinion platform, we are actually going to be building out. I don't know if anyone knows Cora, but it's like. Oh, you don't know Cora Oh, either? I do, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a little like Reddit. You know, it's basically like you can ask a lot of questions and tag experts, so on and so forth. We're going to be building out something like that too. So it's really specialists who are very eager to give um, advice. And maybe you can look at the match and maybe uh, meet the right practitioner through there as well. Uh, but going back to how we plan to scale, to spread, and to help as many of you as possible – uh, I am going to be creating, I, I'm calling them pods, where at one time I'm going to be reaching out to like at least 10 practitioners in a certain city or area and have them grow there and tell their networks. So actually, California's next. Yay! Uh, San Diego and San Francisco, those are where we're starting to build our practitioner base um, in Texas as well. And one of the reasons for that is uh, if you're in telemedicine, if you provide telemedicine, depending on your specialty, you may be limited to that state. So I figured 
New York being New York what it is, California and Texas being massive states, figured that would be a good place to go <laughs> uh, first. But anyone listening, um, if you are not in those states or if you're in different parts of the world, um, I want to help as many people as possible. So if you guys do have practitioners that you've had who you highly recommend, uh, it really is the more the merrier. Because if you if you are aware of a dating app, <laughs> it the more people, the better the matches are going to be. The more access, the more opportunity. Uh, so I don't like to say it's a numbers game, but numbers help. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What was the best feedback you got from your first launch? What was like the one that just really stuck out? You're like, I am definitely going to change this for this iteration of the website. Best feedback. Well, I know one by just observation, this wasn't told to me directly, was that uh, I made it so that the extent of what I call the advanced questions, like all the really, the juicy questions uh, to answer to get the really good match, I left for what, after you registered. And they were like front row center when you got on and like nobody answered them. Oh! <laughs> I was like, wait, I don't understand. They're the important things. I probably I put notes out about it and yet it didn't happen. So now it's part of registration and I made it even faster and easier. It's not even like open questions. It's like drop downs and check offs. So it's fast. Uh, so I know that might not be the most interesting, but it was fascinating to me. Yep, User it's important. It's not intuitive. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I thought I couldn't make that any easier. Um, but no, now it's part of registration so that it's just all done the moment you get there. Um, I'm trying to think of other other feedback that was um, – so community is obviously important, as we spoke about with the Facebook group uh, groups, and, and there are lots of other communities. We did and, and will have a community chats that's more like a forum, um, but interestingly, no one used those at first. And some of this might just be that because of how well a copia spread a little unevenly, uh, but I really want to see how that can be utilized um, to, you know, the extent that it, I know community can help people. Maybe it isn't something that well a copia is used for, uh, but I would love to hear back from, from more people on how we can bring community together outside of just matching people. I don't want to say just because matching is pretty important, <laughs> uh, but something. Uh, maybe I can – I don't know why I'm like – I feel like there's much better feedback that we got that I'm just blanking on right now. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we. I mean, we've learned so much. I will say that there was a bit of a cycle, like a full, a full circle rather, of uh, our target. So it, w it started with, you could say, me as like a target patient, someone with an invisible illness, someone who's um, – relatively young, like it was really targeting millennials at first, uh, because we're particularly overlooked. Um, and then I started speaking actually to a lot of cancer patients. And so for a while we were targeting cancer patients because uh, there needs to be better access and awareness of integrative medicine for them. And while there was a clear need for those patients and we're still um, supporting those with cancer, Truth be told, I'm not a cancer patient. Uh, I obviously, unfortunately, know a lot of people who have. My my father-in-law passed away in May, um, in June, uh, from brain cancer. But I really wanted our at least initial community to be a community that I identified with, um, that I, I would be a user. And when I go to these fibromyalgia groups and I ask questions about their relationships with doctors, that that I'm like, I'm in it fully. So that did come full circle in, um, I guess, who we specialize in. And again, while we're bringing on all sorts of practitioners, uh, this is very much, at least as we're new, for the Spoonie community. And uh, all the practitioners we bring on definitely treat those. All right, I have one last question before I go and take painkillers and get on H-Wave to pop this back in. Um, life Are hack you? for, <laughs> no, it's, it's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, it's been a long, long 72 hours. Um, 
what are some of your life hacks for trying to start something up with a chronic illness? Is there something that you learned about your own health, about your own way of taking care of yourself from the last time to this time? Was there something you did differently for your own body to make sure you could do this? I'm seeing it's pretty intensive. I mean, like you really have a lot you do every day. What do you do to prepare yourself for that? Yeah, that, that is a really great question. It's definitely evolved over time because this isn't my first business, but it's my first startup. Uh, and it, it was, maybe it was good that I was naive at first because I definitely wouldn't have done this. That in parenthood, naivety goes a long way. Yup. <laughs> Marriage uh, too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, obviously bumps along the way. Uh, but so I, I really can't stress that, uh, routines, like for me in particular, morning routine has been really important. And I've fought against that for a long time because there's all this advice on how you should do the most important thing first thing in the morning before you do your morning routine. And I've tried it and you know what? It just doesn't work for me. I need like at least an hour and a half to become a true human. Uh, I do need to take my supplements, do my like PT, meditate, um, make sure I know what I'm eating for the day because when you have a hectic lifestyle, uh, as a lot of us do, regardless of being startup founders, um, preparing for that hecticness is really important. Uh, so like I'll basically pre-prepare my food. I actually, even on a whiteboard, write out what I'm going to be eating that day. So I don't have to guess and reach for something bad in my fridge. Uh, I'm obviously a nutritionist and I'm definitely not perfect, <laughs> definitely not perfect. Uh, but I work on it all the time because I know how, how much food in impacts, um, my pain, like with inflammation, for instance. Um, now there's also what happens when it goes awry, you know, whether it be, I haven't been following my morning routine, um, consistently or just something happens in life. And a great example I will give is our lunch. <laughs> um, like 10 days ago, we uh, we officially publicly launched Wellacopia to the world. Uh, but at the same time, I, 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 this was a great idea, maybe a terrible idea. Uh, we hosted our first major event. Uh, it was like sort of a silent launch event for Wellacopia, but first and foremost, it was for the community. It was in Manhattan. It was um, an event of over 100 people. Uh, it's called the Care Fair. And it was super multifaceted with like uh, health practitioners and healthy food and classes and products and a uh, mural making and coloring and photo booth and live music. It was just like a whole mess, a beautiful mess of things that I had to put together. And it went wonderfully. It, I am so happy that um, I actually went through with this event because uh, I thought of it a year ago. And actually, um, if you guys know the wonderful nonprofit Suffering the Silence, um, one of the co-founders is Allie Cashel. She was my, uh, uh, I guess, my co-host for the event. She is the best. Look up sufferingthesilence.com, also about... Go to our show notes. Go to the website, um, invisiblenotbroken.com. Go to the podcast. I will have everything linked up. So you can just head right on over there, and I will have Suffering in Silence. Is that right? Suffering the Silence. Oh, the Silence. Yeah, we'll have that it's all linked up. It's profit for Wellacopia people. It wasn't created for that, but, uh, you know, she's a chronic Lyme warrior and so on. Uh, but anyway, sorry, talking about how I dealt with it, uh, I was overjoyed. You know, and, and so in the moment and probably running on adrenaline, I did, also didn't eat during the event, which is not me at all. I even ate at my wedding. <laughs> um, but uh, afterward, who um, stress is stress, right? Uh, and I was chronically stressed, even though it was happy. I was very happy during the whole process. So the next few days were really rough. Uh, I definitely had a pretty bad flare up, um, had to cancel plans, but I didn't let that get to me uh, because I knew that the reason that I was stressed one was for a good reason and also I felt empowered I was like here I am empowering this community and I can empower myself as well and that means self-care both in in body mind soul uh, so I took it upon myself to um, reach out for those I guess you could say the typical but also the emergency um, care so maybe that's an Epsom salt bath was one of them. I won't lie. There was some Advil involved. There was some Advil involved. <laughs> 
That is so adorable. I love that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what a nice sugar pill. That's cute. Yeah. I I really don't take painkillers like NSAIDs very often because I know if I took them every time I was in pain, well, I'd be all sorts of addicted and have holes in my stomach. You know, that's uh, thing that but, a lot of people don't know is like the over-the-counter drugs can be very, very dangerous to your kidneys and liver. Like, I, not don't take stop taking that if your doctor says you just go ahead talk to your doctor but also ask your doctor about if you're taking those over the counter more than once a day every day you probably should get your kidney um, numbers checked like just a little hint from me to all of you I'm not a doctor please don't sue me but I was shocked when I was a teenager and I was taking the Advil and Aleve over the counter and like two or three times a day and they did my numbers it was it was very scary when I had that done after a year it is scary and actually I guess in uh, not a good way for him, but my father has, um, uh, I guess an ulcer. He had a, he had a couple ulcers. My father's in phenomenal shape, eats well, exercises. He does have joint pain from impact injuries. <laughs> um, and, uh, he took Advil as prescribed every day. And I kept saying to him growing up, I was like, I, I don't think that's good for you. He said, it's as prescribed. My doctor says it's fine. Lo and behold, he gets an ulcer, like a bad one. He's in writhing pain for like months. And I look at him and I'm like, I don't want to say I told yeah. you. <laughs> don't. Do not ever say that. <laughs> Just smile and nod. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, there you go. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I d try not to take them as often as possible. Also with fibro, the neuropathy can be very short lived and very intense. So it doesn't make sense to even take a painkiller. But after the care fair, um, it was pretty intense. So I took that. Um, in addition to CBD oil, which I'm really experimenting with and loving, mm -hmm. uh, it at the very least takes the edge off and makes me feel like calm and, um, yeah, I can, I can deal when I have it, when, even when things are bad, I slept a lot. Uh, but I, the, I guess the message that I want to get across, cause I could list all the different things I try out, um, is that I made it a priority. Like you are a priority. And they say, when you don't have your health, you don't have anything, and maybe our health is always going to be a little bit on the edge, but that doesn't mean you can't um, manage it to a certain extent and and really take care of yourself. And oh, oh wait, wait! I don't know if we're, you're going to show a video, but this is just. Hold on. <laughs> I will show head. the video. Everyone should watch everyone. <laughs> I have, this is just like a good a good coincidence. Um, so oh, that's so darling. One of the practitioners gave me this shirt and it says, fall in love with taking care of yourself. That and is very cute. It's like, I love this. I want to wear it every day. <laughs> it looks comfy too. It is. I was actually really hot, so I'm glad I took it off. I, it's winter, isn't it? I, I swear it's, it's winter. winter. I think, you know. Um, and I get so excited talking to you so that I get off. <laughs> Uh, but yes, fall in love with taking care of yourself. You want to like tweet that today or something. That's yep, my hashtag it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Fall in love with taking care of yourself. Um, that's actually, I'll just say one more really quick thing. Um, I have a little tattoo. It's like a poor excuse for a tattoo. It's Aww. three dots. It's it took two minutes. Um, <laughs> and, um, I'm not really a permanency person, but very long story short, I decided to attach this to, and it's actually a Ryan's belt, not an ellipses. I know it's just dots, but whatever. Um, I attach it to, um, I guess, a quote or mantra, whatever, uh, fall in love with your life. And I decided to get that tattooed to me, or, went, or that's what it means to me, because that is never going to leave me. And that's a message I want to carry with me till the day I die. And, uh, and honestly, it's been really helpful having it there. I do pretty much only mostly look at it when things aren't going well, but I love it because my instant reaction is right. Falling in love with my life means every part of my life, the ups and the downs and everything in between. And some of the time those downs are my illness and that's okay. And, um, I'm going to get through it. I am strong. Um, I am unstoppable. I really like, I really like the word unstoppable. So I'm not saying everyone should get a tattoo. <laughs> I'm not even like a huge tattoo lover, but um, I think having a go-to tool, resource, mantra, what have you, just like a short, a, a little something, a go-to when you are feeling really down and don't know what to do with yourself. Uh, I, I really, really, really recommend that. 
it's been very helpful. I can't, I mean, then again, like I am covered in tattoos. Um, the ones on my forearm are the ones I always want to remind myself what to be and what to do uh, all for that. Um, but what you said is, is so incredibly true. And I don't know if I could ever fall in love with my downs, but I do try to view them as a part of the process and not to, not to hate them or myself too much. And like I've been telling my preteen daughter, don't treat yourself worse than you would treat your friend. So when you're starting to like, as I just went through a real down, I, this is my first day being out of bed for like, I think it's been three days. And so I start to get like really down on myself because I haven't been posting to the podcast. I haven't been taking care of the podcast for those days. I was in a haze and I start to really hate myself. And I was like, okay, I've got to take my own advice that I give my kid, which is if my friend was taken out by illness for a few days, I wouldn't berate her for not getting business stuff done. So it's just like, okay, I have to remember to be my own friend also. Like, Yes, absolutely. Uh, and it, and it doesn't have to be that you fall in love with the downs, but as you said, fall in love with the process. I said like fall in love with your life yeah. and that might be respecting the downs and, you know, Oh, I not- like that. I like the respecting the downs. You got to respect it. Yeah. Like it's a part of it. It's a part of life. And that could be, you know, your chronic pain. It, it could be a divorce. Like there's all sorts of ups and downs in life. Um, but honestly, if it was just coasting, it's not a life you want to live either. So, yeah. I, you know, I always said getting out of life, like, perfectly pure, clean, it was never the point. You should be, like, Tokyo drifting into that spot with, like, the engine busted, <laughs> the paint falling off. Like, should have yeah. some fun. And every everybody has their issues. And so it's relative. Like, I know some people that are very wealthy, beautiful, married, phenomenal people, have great, great, like, all this stuff. But, you know, maybe they had a miscarriage. Or just like, and it devastated them, you know, like. Yeah, that's absolutely like a part of this podcast and why I started it is that. And oh. Yeah, it's okay. We're all good. I started this podcast (laughs) just for that reason is that I don't think that people really understand what's going on with others all the time. And it's, it's such an easy thing to make a quick snap judgment on what someone's life is like, or why your coworker is sleeping at your desk, or why is that healthy young person sitting down when there's someone who's older standing? Like, there's a lot that can be going on in someone's life that you might not be privy to. So instead of snapping to a judgment and making someone's life miserable by like, taking a photo or a video of it and putting it up online and hashtagging it and shaming them, find out first, like have a discussion, ask someone if you're really concerned why they're doing this, a kind and nice discussion on, hey, you look tired. I don't need to know what's going on, but do you need help? You seem to be sitting while this person is standing. Well, I'm sitting also. I'll just give that person the benefit of the doubt. I'll stand up so that person, the older person can sit down. Or the person who has driven into a handicapped spot but doesn't have a placard, you could go up and say, I see you're parking in this spot. Do you need some help with your groceries? Mm. You could always start with a positive attitude about it and always believe the best in someone and you will have a better day. (laughs) Like You will always have a better day if you start out assuming the best in someone. That's so, that's really so true. I actually um, have a practice. I would like to do more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How big could that smile? Like, I went full joker there. <laughs> You're amazing. All uh, the teeth. Uh, I have this practice where every so often I'll like kind of people watch, but rather than judge, which I think a lot of people do when they people watch, is I, I create a story about their life and often I'll, I'll attach something negative to that story to make them more real. Um, like because everyone, as, as we said, goes, goes through things. So I'm like, what if that person hasn't spoken to their daughter in five years? Or what if that person just had like a really shitty day at work? Um, or they're going through a financial crisis. I'll think of positive things too. Like, like what are they dealing with? And then what are the things in their life that make them so happy? Especially when I see like people waiting for a bus, for some reason, that's when I do it the most often. I like go through the line and think about what these, the lives these people might have. And it's very humbling. Like, yeah, I, I always try to like think like I was a photographer for years. So my first thing is, is seeing what's beautiful in every person that walks past. I always like I, I really don't necessarily see flaws. I that's was my job to see what's beautiful. So every person that walks past, I'm like, my 
God, that's like the most beautiful silver hair I've ever seen. Or wow, that person has an amazing smile. And then if I start to go negative, I start thinking of like, what do I wish for that person for today? Like I do this a lot when I'm driving, not when I'm driving, but when others are driving and like car gets cut off. It's like, okay, well, I really, I it was my first reaction is to go full New Yorker. I was trained to drive by a New Yorker. So I can go through every swear word in one breath, dropping all the R's. I can just go right through it. But I try, this is a practice. I fail often, but I do try to think, okay, I hope they're getting where they're going uh, because they're obviously needed somewhere. So I hope they're safe. Like I try really hard to like turn it when I see myself going ragey. Like I do this a lot with my kids and my pets when they are like stepping on my cape while I'm trying to save everyone and do everything right. And they're like, no, I will make this harder. I try really hard to like turn it around and go, okay, I really hope you find compassion and empathy right now because right now you're not showing any goddamn compassion or empathy. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I, so I try that. I try to turn it. I like, that's a beautiful thing you were saying. I really think it's important that we all humanize or, I mean, I don't know the right word. Please forgive me. I'm like five seconds from screeching. Um, but I think it's really important to show empathy and compassion for everyone who's here, even the people we drastically disagree with. It's important to, to you don't have the right to take someone's humanity or their right to empathy and compassion away. That's not right. your job. So there you go. That is our New Year's statement for the year. I <laughs> Right there. Oh, cool. I yeah, that, kindness, go compassion, to go to wallacopia.com right now. <laughs> so I'm going to have to say goodbye, um, but thank you so much for coming back to the podcast. You are welcome anytime, and you are absolutely welcome on the blog anytime. Please, for the love of God, I'm the only one doing content for the blog. So please, send me your blog posts. I'll push no them out problem. onto mine. Um, but thank you, everyone, for being patient with us while we took a little bit of a break. As you've heard, I might need to take another break. So fingers crossed, I'll come back. Um, and never, ever underestimate when you guys send me nice emails or nice things on our Facebook group um, or on Instagram. You have no idea how much that means to me. There have been days I'm like, I don't think I can continue with this. It's too hard. It's too much for one person. Um, but your little letters, uh, they really get me to come back and do more. So please don't underestimate kind words. Um, if you want to do something really kind and nice for the podcast, Apple podcast is still the best place to go to write something embarrassingly nice. Um, or even just really honest. I, I do read the comments and I do take them to heart. And, um, if you want to share us, that is wonderful. Share us with your support group, share us with your friends and family. We really appreciate it. And, I just want to do a quick thing here because I did one post and I don't think it got to this person, but we did get some very honest criticism and I just want to put it out there. Um, you do not have to agree with me to come on this podcast. There is no reason that I would not have you on just because you don't agree with my politics or my policies. I will happily discuss with you if you have a different viewpoint. I am really curious about other viewpoints. I am in a bubble. I live in the Bay Area and I barely get out of my house. I am in a bubble. If you have something outside the bubble that you want to talk to me about, I am very curious what everyone's lives are like and what things are going on with you. And if you have something that you would like to say respectfully, kindly with an actual dialogue, I'm in. Please, you know who you are, who wrote the comment. I would love to chat with you. You are very eloquent and you have some very interesting ideas. I don't agree with them, but I would like to hear from you and I would like to see if maybe I might have the wrong idea about what's going on. So thank you so much, everyone. Be kind, be gentle, and be a badass. I know I certainly am going to try to do that today. And hopefully we'll talk soon. Have a great week.